So it's Saturday the 28th of January now and I'm back in the USA after having flown from Sydney on QF7 which is the Airbus A380 operating direct from Sydney to Dallas. Once again I use my Bad Elf GPS units to record the flight and uh, it's a seamless log without any dropouts. During this flight I took the opportunity also to just compare the position of the wingtip to the horizon as we were climbing and I specifically requested an upper deck seat on the right hand side with a window just for these experiments and uh, I was nicely in line with the wingtip so um, what we're looking at there is just uh, my seating position looking out across the wing we're on the ground in Sydney just as we were taxiing out for takeoff now you'll notice the wingtip is significantly below the horizon as we took off this is at about five to six thousand feet you'll notice the position of the horizon it's just cutting through the bottom of that uh, winglet. Now as we climb further, you'll see that the horizon was definitely dropping. And as we get up to cruise altitude, and I, I reference it all via the, um, the altimeter in the GPS, you'll see that the horizon is dropping even further. What I did, and you'll see this in the video, is I just moved the camera up and down in the window just to show that there was no perspective that was causing the change in the position. Of the horizon it was actually just related to the altitude when we're up in the cruise you'll see just how much it has changed from originally being up here you see there's several degrees drop as you would expect operating up at around 35 36 thousand feet so what you'll notice with a lot of the flat earth videos that talk about the horizon rising to eye level they don't have any accurate reference. You've got to be able to compare it to what the true level position is and the only way you can do that is to have something like a head-up display or if you um, don't have access to that sitting as a passenger measure the angle to the horizon when you're at low altitude and then do it again when you're at high altitude and you'll see exactly the same sort of deviation as, as what you're about to see in the video. When we were coming into land just in the last part you'll see the uh, horizon was right up near the wingtip again. I'll just uh, play this video, you can watch it, and it's uh, fairly clear evidence that the horizon actually does drop as we gain altitude. What I'm going to try and do on this flight also is just show the relative position of the horizon to the wing and uh, see if that changes from low altitude to high altitude. Now, obviously, uh, the wingtip is below the horizon, clear there. So we're just approaching 6,000 feet on climb after taking off from Sydney and that's uh, about 1,700 metres altitude. If we have a look out the window, just notice where the horizon is in relation to the wingtip at this altitude. What I'm going to do is just move the camera down and up in the window. You see there's very little perspective change on the wingtip. And what I'll do again, once we're at uh, cruise altitude in the uh, 30s, 30,000 feet plus, we'll have another look at where that horizon is in relation to the wing. So now just over 7,000 feet altitude. climbed about another 11,000 feet. We're just passing uh, 18,000 feet and still climbing. 5,500 meters. And if we look at the wing now, you'll see the lower part of the winglet is now above the horizon. At lower altitude, it was actually just uh, intersecting the horizon. Again, we'll just move the camera up and down to make sure it's not just perspective causing this. lower part of the winglet is above the horizon and we're not even at 20,000 feet yet so you'll see once we get up to uh, the mid 30s cruising altitude it's going to uh, show the horizon has dropped even further. So just passing uh, 21,000 feet now on climb, 6,400 metres. We still have a good GPS lock now. What I want you to notice is that the uh, horizon is now clearly below the lower part of the winglet on the wing and again I'll move the uh, camera up and down in the window so you can see it's not being caused by any perspective. In the uh, previous part of the video where we were at lower altitude 
the, uh, the lower part of the winglet was actually crossing the horizon. Now you can see it's clearly above. And we're not turning because we're still maintaining our direction at 069 degrees. So the aircraft is actually not turning. You're getting a realistic perspective of the wingtip in relation to the horizon. So we're approaching 30,000 feet now, still climbing, still uh, heading 069 degrees, almost 9,000 metres. And if we have a look now again at the wingtip, you'll see that the horizon has dropped even further. Very, very obvious now. Now remember that when we first started this, the horizon was there in line with that part of the, uh, the winglet. Now it's significantly lower. So uh, what you're seeing is actually proof that the horizon is dropping as we gain altitude, and that's uh, evidence of curvature. You see, as I move the camera up and down in the window, it really makes no difference to the position of the horizon in relation to the wind tip. And uh, there we go, just uh, passing 30,000 feet in a few seconds. dropped uh, compared to the first part of this video. So it looks like we've leveled off at 33,000 feet now. Let's have a look at where that horizon is in relation to the wing. You'll see it's significantly lower than where it was when we were flying at lower altitudes. You'll also see that we're now tracking 067. That's because we're flying along the Great Circle route. So our true course does actually change. And uh, just for the purpose of this flight, I've only put in Sydney and Dallas Fort Worth. So my little app here is plotting the Great Circle route, the straight line between Sydney and Dallas. And you'll see we're basically on it. evidence of the uh, horizon drop there by several degrees. If you encounter somebody on YouTube, one of the Flat Earth channels, that states the horizon always rises to eye level, just ask them to answer honestly if they have actually measured it themselves and what sort of accurate reference they use to measure it. Now, I ask this question every time. Every time I see somebody that states the horizon rises to eye level, I ask them, when did you measure it? How high did you go? And what accurate reference did you use? Now, that usually results in me getting blocked or they just ignore the question altogether. I've not had one single person answer that question honestly. So I suggest if you're doing your research and you're doing it honestly, if anyone tells you that the horizon always rises to eye level, ask them to show you a video they made themselves, ask them how they tested it, how high they went, and what accurate reference they used for measuring the horizon drop. So just talking a little bit more about this horizon drop when you go to high altitude. This is just a uh, screenshot from uh, my video when I was at 33,000 feet and you'll notice that the horizon appears to be down here. Now when we were at 6,000 feet the horizon was just at the uh, lower part of the winglet there so you can see there appears to be a significant drop. Now what some people have claimed is that the wing is flexing more. Well no that's not true because what causes the flex on the wing is actually the weight of the aircraft and the weight of the aircraft at 6,000 feet and at 33,000 feet is very similar. If anything, it's lighter at the high altitude, so the wing flex would be less. So, certainly not wing flex. The other claim was that the aircraft was turning. Well, I'll draw your attention to the ailerons here. There are three control surfaces on the A380 on each wing that are ailerons, and they can move in unison and sometimes uh, independently. 
but uh, what they do is they will actually cause the aircraft to turn or roll, roll left or roll right, and whenever the aircraft's turning, you'll see those moving quite significantly. The other thing people have said is that looking at this horizon, we're not looking at the true horizon because it's so far away and that uh, there's a lot of haze and poor visibility, so it's being obscured. So that's fine, you know, I, I actually don't disagree with that because there are some days when the haze is so poor, we just can't discern uh, a clear horizon at all, and that, that's absolutely true. But uh, by making that claim, they're actually contradicting a very common flat earth claim that the horizon always rises to eye level. So it's not always rising to eye level. They're now saying that it's due to the uh, lack of visibility, due to um, reduced visibility in the atmosphere. So, uh, so obviously the horizon, one way or another, is not always rising to uh, eye level. Now let's just address some of that a little bit further. The, uh, the other thing that has been addressed is uh, there's no way of determining where true eye level is here, that's okay too. Um, what I'm going to do is just draw your attention to something in a, an aircraft, and this is uh, fairly common in most airliners and most corporate aircraft. They are three little alignment balls, and when you uh, jump in the seat and you do your self butt up and adjust the seat position, you align your eyes so that two of these balls are completely lined up with each other, and what that does is it ensures that your seat is in the same position every time you fly and that gives you the optimum view of the instrument panel and in our aircraft with a head-up display it gives the best view straight through the head-up display because the field of view is quite narrow and if you you move your head left or right just a few inches you'll lose completely the head-up display picture. So let me just show you in our aircraft the seat alignment balls. Now you'll see that this ball here is actually aligned with the one behind it and in my video I actually do pan around so you can see the two balls. Notice when they're aligned that's actually the position of our eye level. Now look where the horizon is. It's again significantly below that. So absolute proof that the horizon does not always rise to eye level. Now whether it's due to curvature of the earth or whether it's just due to reduced visibility it really doesn't matter. The point is it has not risen to eye level. So that refutes the flat earth claim that the horizon always rises to eye level. It absolutely does not. And uh, what we'll look at now is just this um, reduced visibility. Okay, now in the aircraft that I fly, we have something called an enhanced vision system that actually enables us to look through most of the haze and poor visibility. And you'll see that when I turn on the enhanced vision system, the horizon that it is showing is basically closely matched to the visible horizon. It's a little bit higher on that side, so that's showing there's probably a little bit of extra haze there, so that's fine. But in every case, you'll see that that horizon is below the true level. Okay, so we definitely have a situation where the horizon has dropped not only below eye level, but below true level, because the aircraft has electronic instruments which measure true level. And when we're flying in level flight, this uh, velocity vector is in line with the true level. I also found uh, another good video, and I'll link to this one as well, which shows the same thing in a similar type of aircraft. At ground level, you'll see that that line is in line with the um, horizon, but again, when they fly, if I can get that forward, okay, it shows basically the flight. As it's climbing, you'll see the horizon level is rising above the, the uh, actual Earth's horizon and you'll see up there at 25,000 feet it's also showing the horizon is below the true level. So again I'll link to that video, it's well worth watching because it shows the um, basically the whole flight.
So there are plenty of good videos on YouTube that uh, explain the EVS and just give you an example of how much better you can see uh, in the head-up display using the EVS than you can with the naked eye. You see the EVS uh, shows you detail that you just cannot see.